quickly remind you, you are listening to Sammy SK Football, a soccer family. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's uh, on YouTube and also on Twitter, Sammy SK Shop. That's Sammy SK Shop. And for Football Live, visit our website, www.aroundthegrounds.co. Please, we need your support here on Sami SK Football so that we can access more commentary here on Sami SK Football, guys. All right, so people, uh, Anthony was great. I, I... Just can remind you, 20 minutes played. You're listening to Sami SK Football Channel on YouTube in association with the Coventry Zone. Nil nil in this game. Nil nil across the across the current live games as well. Apart from Juventus, they currently won the last against Benfica. to the path, Cristiano Ronaldo is one touch, he's going to take it to the left hand side, plays Ganacho here, Ganacho's touch, takes him inside, Ganacho's shot, and Manchester United lead 1-0, 16 minutes gone, it's a brilliant finish by the Argentinian youngster, Ganacho, it's Manchester United 1, Raul Sociedad 0 on the night, and the Manchester United fans who have travelled here are in jubilation, because that's one of the two goals they need that will take them top. Ericsson on the halfway line trying to play it to Garnacho does so well here is the Argentinian Garnacho back to Ericsson Ericsson tries to feed through Garnacho he's in behind Garnacho he's won it for United has the youngster the Argentinian with just a one well just one minute to play on the clock on off the bench and sure enough he's got the winner for Manchester United so to the light of Eric Ten Hag great play on that left hand side by Christian Ericsson feeding through Garnacho and just has that pace to beat Bobby Decaldova Reed as an Argentinian flag in the stands and as the Argentinian takes off his shirt and celebrates he's won it for Manchester United right at the death Alejandro Garnacho remember the name the youngster wins it for Manchester United fabulous goal as well great play by Christian Eriksen playing it in behind but he had so much to do the Argentinian he had Decaldova Reed coming from his right he had but near Bert Leno blocking off that near post but just with his left foot slashes at it on to, to that far right corner and wins the game for Manchester United now, surely. Van to Vinicius Junior and Real Madrid have scored! Put in by the Brazilian, who we said pre-match could be one of the match winners in this game and it could prove to be as the team celebrates in Real Madrid as the sea of white shirts inside the Stade de France go wild and it's their first real meaningful attack of the second half which has been put away by Vinicius Junior 58 gone Liverpool now Real Madrid won could like to be striking twice from the final from four years ago in Paris well you did say the only thing about uh Fede Valverde was his lack of assists and that was a fantastic ball across the box to find Vinicius Jr. I don't know where Trent Alexander-Arnold was. He left his man, one of the danger men for Real Madrid, free as a bird. It's going to be very tight. If there, there's a VAR check on this, I think he's just on side. But Trent Alexander-Arnold leaving him, I said it in the first half, the freedom of the city of Paris. It was Mo Salah in the first half. It's Vinicius Jr. in the second half, and Real Madrid sucker punch Liverpool. There is just something about this competition and this team that just goes hand in hand. Who said romance was dead? And Zinedine Zidane is in the crowd, a man who knows all about Real Madrid, knows all about this stadium, doesn't he? Given he scored the winner in the 1998 World Cup final, two of the three goals anyway against Brazil. 24 years later, he could be witnessing Vinicius Junior be a match winner in this stadium for Real Madrid as they look like they're going to be winning their 14th Champions League as it stands. And it just goes to show, doesn't it, whilst Liverpool didn't put their chances away, Thibaut Courtois' saves in those first half have proved to be even more decisive and even more crucial as it stands as Benzema has uh, been unable to find fail on Mendy. But how do Liverpool go about it now, Billy? Because it's been a real sort of opening 15 minutes of this second half where they have looked a little bit lacklustre, not really been able to get the same form or same sort of rhythm as that sort of first 15, 20 minutes of that first half. 
They just need to stick to that. They didn't react quickly enough, but they could be in on goal themselves here. Bruno Fernandes is well onside. He's found Anthony Martial, and they've levelled almost immediately now Manchester United. Aston Villa were in the lead for barely 90 seconds, and Manchester United have walked the ball in by a... Anthony Martial, the Frenchman, back in the starting lineup this evening. The ball was squared to him by Bruno Fernandes after a bit of a lofty ball over the top. It was pretty route one stuff. Jogo Dallo. Now Furlong up from the back has just absolutely smashed home from 20 yards out, right footed, it kissed the right hand post before nestling beyond Daniel Backman into the back of the net, it's a goal worthy of rescuing a share of the spoils, the first half was absolutely atrocious, in the second we've seen four top quality goals and that has to go down as the pick of the bunch, we're into two of five added minutes, who knows, West Brom may even win it West Brom 2 Watford 2 second half here at the Hawthorns has just been a goal of the season competition extraordinary stuff fantastic hit it's 2-2 two -two. is there time for a winner here at the Hawthorns as a goal in League 2 at Medellini in Abrams two minutes into six added on Notch County 3 MK Dons 3 corner on the near side taken by Jody Jones when he got it back uh, from Dan Crowley he played it low across the six yard box and for me the man of the match has been Aaron the main and steering it at the back post he converted slamming it home Notts County 3 MK Dons 3 thank goodness Mansfield was called off yeah you've absolutely treated yourself to a cracker there uh, elsewhere in League 2 Harrogate go 4-1 up against Gillingham Jack Muldoon has got the fourth uh, for Harrogate Harrogate 4 uh, Gillingham 1 Harrogate trying to get themselves into the playoff places. Northampton go 2-0 up against Port Vale, who will remain in the bottom four. It's uh, We've got more goals going in. Walsall take the lead against Salford, 2-1. Mo Farr on loan from West Brom with that goal. Sutton 3, Swindon 1, Swindon pull one back. Full time at Stoke, Dave Rowe. Stoke 1, Huddersfield 1, probably a better point for Stoke, although they will feel like it should have been a win and a big step to safety. As it was, they had to come from behind. Huddersfield had one goal ruled out in the first half. Pearson's header denied due to Jones being offside in front of the keeper. They did score though on the stroke of half time. Great finish by Bojan. Radulovic is first for the club, taking a pass from Headley, cutting inside and finding the top corner. Stoke hit the bar through Baker. They equalised early in the second half, wonderful strike from Kiana Hoover in from the right to co a shot into the top corner beyond Nichols after that they missed so many chances Nichols saved well denied Berger and Laron and right at the end the Terriers went close with Bergzog denied by Eberson, a point apiece Huddersfield will still be in the bottom three Stoke 1, Huddersfield 1 uh, we've got uh, a few minutes here to full time, there's a late goal in the National League and Wealdstone who uh, remarkably lost to Oxford City on Friday have gone a goal down at home to Solio Moores Jamie Osborne with the goal for the Moors who are heading for the playoffs that's more bad news for David Nobles uh, Wealdstone relegation threatened side uh, is full time at Middlesbrough let's go there Alan Biggs it's Middlesbrough 2 Sheffield Wednesday Neil Borough are now unbeaten in 6 and they might have scored 6 today such was their dominance Sheffield Wednesday now without a win in 4 as such a critical stage of the season but it was the way they performed or didn't that was uh, most critical to their hopes uh, I thought after this because it, it was a standoff performance with what was effectively a front foot attacking lineup really puzzling all the urgency came from an increasingly dominant borough uh, who could even afford to miss a penalty Sam Greenwood slammed his kick against an upright there was also a succession of saves from James Beadle to keep Wednesday remotely in it plus misses from the likes of the otherwise dangerous Emmanuel Latte Laugh but uh, he was influential enough he stretched the Wednesday defence from the start he was also the player whose header deflected in off uh, Michael Hehekwa from a corner late in the first half that gave Borough the breakthrough the second half was 
complete, well, almost completely one-sided. There was just one attempt, of which uh, required a save from Seni Diang uh, to uh, to deny uh, Ike Ogbo. But Borra got their second goal with some fortune. Isaiah Jones's cross come shot from the right took a wicked deflection off Barry Bannon to leave uh, James Beadle on this occasion completely helpless and helpless if they carry on playing like this is what Danny Rolls Sheffield Wednesday will be Middlesbrough 2 Sheffield Wednesday 0 Right, we've got a corner late on here at the Hawthorns. It's West Brom 2, Watford 2. The Baggies have that corner. Alex Crook. And Acute angle into the bottom corner and in stoppage time it was defender Furlong who popped up two yards outside the area, 20 yards out and he rifled a right-footed effort in off the inside of the post. Brilliant finish to this game, West Brom 2, Watford 2. Well they redeemed themselves with that second half, brilliant goals and a, a fantastic 45 minutes of football. The late equalisers in the National League for Rochdale and for Ebbsfleet at Dagenham, Birmingham have won against Preston. Plymouth have lost at home to Bristol City those are full times there's a goal in League 1 at Bolton Mickey Gray well, we've had two goals Adrian it's now Bolton 5 Reading 2 the first one coming from Reading on 93 minutes Paul McCary who came off the bench basically Bolton didn't clear their lines and from a couple of yards out McCary just poked the ball into the back of the net and just as you come to me 30 seconds before John Bodvarton gets his second goal on 95 minutes it was across the, across the six yard area and Bodvarton who's already got a goal himself they're in again oh just played it wide but yeah Bodvarson just inside the six yard area the ball was played across the six yard box he slid in from about two or three yards out just to poke the ball into the back of the net I think it's going to finish here in pretty much about ten seconds time area but it's Bolton five Reading two wow uh, some amazing uh, score lines uh, today where are we off to for full time next let's head to the CBS arena with Adrian Clark and Jeff Peters Coventry 1, Cardiff 2, a bad day for Liam Kitching, scoring not one but two own goals. A real blow for the Sky Blues in their push for the playoffs. They took the lead through Ellis Sims, continuing his rich vein of form. A 13th goal in 10 games, sweeping in Van Avijk's cross. Not long after, Josh Bowler looks set to equalise before Kitching thumped his attempted clearance past his own keeper. They went ahead midway through the second half, the uh, uh, Bluebirds. Bowler again involved, his cross deflected in off the unfortunate kick. Hadji Wright had a late goal ruled out for offside as Cardiff hung on for a fifth win in seven. And they deserved that fifth win in seven as well. It was a really organised performance. The shape of the team was absolutely spot on. They kept Coventry City at arm's length. The Sky Blues couldn't get in behind them all afternoon. And they had the best chances as well, Cardiff City. They, in truth, they could have won this 3 or 4 1. Coventry surprisingly lacklustre. They just didn't play or move the ball at a fast enough tempo to disrupt a very, very good defensive performance from Cardiff City. If Coventry are going to go up this season, I have to play better than this. Well, they remain four points outside the playoffs with a game in hand. Leeds and Southampton, two tough games next for them. Coventry 1, Cardiff 2. Uh, we've got uh, all the full times are coming up very shortly. <clears throat> Carlisle haven't uh, won today, they've lost today, but they haven't been relegated just yet. Let's get full time at Swansea, Lawrence Mora. Where it finished, Swansea nil, QPR one. Rangers make it back-to-back -back wins on Easter weekend to give them clear water between them and the relegation zone. And the goal that won it was a collector's item from Steve Cook. 71 on the clock when the big centre-back adjusted his feet beautifully before dispatching a volley into the far corner of the home team's net. There were wild celebrations from the travelling fans. And that was partly because after creating the best chances in the first half, the London side were battered in the second period. Grimes and 
Jonathan Sorinola hit the bar. Yates should have scored from a header. Cooper definitely should have done better with his weak finish. And then right at the end, Sorinola back post header was dreadful when in a terrific position. Marty Fasuentes' team have taken 13 points in six away games. I'll be shocked if they're relegated this season. Swansea with 47 points. They should be OK, but I'll be frustrated not to have finished it today. Swansea nil, QPR 1. I'll give the uh, full picture in the uh, tables when we've done all the full time to stand by for that. Let's get full time at the Stadium of Light. Graham Courtney. Well, Sunderland 1, Blackburn Rovers 5. Sunderland actually started brightly in this game. Didn't matter though. After 29 minutes, deadlock to Sammy Smodix and he blasted in across the face of the Sunderland goal. He got a second goal five minutes later as well. In the second half, well, only 90 seconds on the clock. Counter-attack by Blackburn. They really were pacey going forward. Sam Gallagher putting Ryan Hedges through. He's finished it very, very nicely for his second of the season. Uh, Sammy Smodix, by the way, is up to 29 for this season. Another steady build-up ten minutes later, and Hedges through to Tyrese Dolan. He's finished into the bottom corner. Sunderland did get one back in the 77th minute. Shot parried by Ainsley Pears, the goalkeeper for Rovers. It went straight into the path of Chris Rigg and he's just knocked it in from close range. But, well, the fight back, it didn't really uh, come to anything. Quickly snuffed out Andrew Moran making it five for Rovers. So the Blackburn boss, John Eustace, he wins his first game since taking over. And Rovers, of course, taking a giant step there towards safety. As for uh, Sunderland, well, my phone is awash with disgruntled messages from Mickey Gray. Uh, what a mess the owners are making of his football club. It's finished here at the Stadium of Light. Sunderland 1, Blackburn Rovers 5. Uh, talking to Mickey Gray, let's uh, head to his game at Bolton. Full-time whistle's just gone and loads of goals there, Mickey. Yeah, certainly was, Adrian. It's finished here, Bolton 5 at Reading 2. Back to winning ways and now they put pressure on Portsmouth and Derby at the top of the table who play tomorrow. Watched by a crowd of over 25,000 here at the Tough Sheet Community Stadium. The first goal coming on 11 minutes through Aaron Collins, who ended up getting a hat-trick. Right foot from the edge of the box was he's probably the pick of the bunch. Super strike into the top corner to make it 1-0. The big surprise was the equaliser. Came from Lewis Wing. Absolutely super strike from him from the edge of the box as well on 40 minutes to make it 1-1. About as good as it got for Reading. But then just before half-time, Mbengi fouls Aaron Connells inside the penalty box on 40 eight minutes Aaron Connell sticks the penalty away into the bottom corner come out in the second half we didn't have to wait too long for the third goal for Bolton John Bod Varson with his left foot from four yards out assisted by McGorm a good play down the right hand side just had to slot the ball into the back of the net then on 76 minutes Aaron Collins did get his hat trick he fired the ball into the roof of the net only from about six yards out again they just click, couldn't clear their lines Reading and then you thought the game was over but Reading gave them a little bit of a scare on 93 minutes Paul Macari just came off the bench again Bolton couldn't clear their lines and Macari from a couple of yards out they just poked the ball into the back of the net but they wanted the final say in the game and on 95 minutes John Bud Varson got his second goal good play down the left hand side Bud Varson just had to slide in and he did fire the ball into the roof of the net to see out a comfortable win for Bolton Wanderers they now put pressure on Derby and Portsmouth in front of them. They're on 78 points. They're knocking on the door. They've got Portsmouth to play, and I think they've got to play Peterborough, Adrian, on the last day of the season. But a good day at the office for Ian Everett and Bolton Wanderers. They win here 5-2 against Reading. And did it. You're absolutely spot on. It's uh, Peterborough Bolton final day of the season. Could be crucial, could be just to decide playoff places. Uh, let's find out what happened to the Pox this afternoon at Brisbane Road in League One. Alvin Martin and Ollie Clink. It finished here, Leighton Orient 1, Peterborough 2, Posh holding on to pick up an important win in that push for promotion. Hector Kiprianu and Efren Mason Clark put them in control, both goals coming in the first half. Orient got themselves back into it with 25 minutes to go through Ethan Galbraith, a wonderful volley from inside the box. And what a chance they had to equalise too. Dan Aguiai put a free header over the bar with five minutes left and really he should have done much better. Alvin Martin alongside me, Orient battled well in that second half but it was that excellent first half from Peterborough that got the job done yeah I think over the 90 minutes they were a lot better you know they looked like a division between the two of them Ollie to be fair uh, and it was only I mean the score line was 2-1 but you, you you, they could have had another 4 or 5 goals Peterborough mm. and, and I think the lessons to be learned I'm sure for Peterborough and Darren Ferguson will be telling them this you have to be more clinical they got into so many good positions great 4 on 4s 2 on 2s uh, in, in positions where they can supply and they didn't do it today but they did enough to win the game but I think going forward he'll want to 
see a lot more clinical finishing in terms of a final third. It's a big blow for Orient's playoff hopes. They stay 10th, nine points off sixth place. It means Peterborough move within seven points of the top two in League One, and it's a win that further cements their position in the playoff places too. Full time here at Brisbane Road, Leighton Orient 1, Peterborough 2. And what a game in League 2 at Meadow Lane for Talk Sports, Ian Abrams. Notts County 3, MK Dons 3 at 20 to 2. I was asked, set a challenge, could I get to Meadow Lane from Mansfield, whose game had been called off against Accrington Stanley? Well, with good traffic and a decent car park attendant who let me in, of course I could. And wow, was I pleased I made the effort. Dean gave MK Dons the lead after 19 minutes, a thunderous drive from 22 yards into the top corner, which Sam Austin equalised right on half time from two yards out, a scruffy goal. Goal. Jatta headed in his first Meadow Lane goal for Notts County to the home side of the 2-1 lead. But Ellis Harrison was sent on by the MK Dons manager Mike Williamson and promptly scored twice. First set up eight yards out and then brilliantly set clear to chip deliciously over the goalkeeper with seven minutes to go. Was that to be the winner? No. Aaron Lemayne had been the man of the match and deservedly two minutes into added on time of which there were six. He rammed in at the far post from Jody Jones' cross. The crowd enjoyed it. I don't think either the manager would have enjoyed it. I absolutely loved it. Finished MK Dons 3, Notts County 3. Uh, it is TalkSport Game Day Live on Easter Monday, and TalkSport's the only place that brings you all the full time, so let's get a full classified check. This is Game Day. Full time classifieds. In the Championship, Leicester City 3, Norwich City 1, Birmingham City 1, Preston 0, Coventry 1, Cardiff 2, Middlesbrough 2, Sheffield Wednesday 0, Plymouth 0, Bristol City 1, Rotherham 2, Millwall 1, Stoke 1, Huddersfield 1, Sunderland 1, Blackburn 5, Swansea 0, QPR 1, West Brom 2, Watford 2, Ipswich Southampton at 5.30 and Leeds United against Hull City at 8 are both live and exclusive on Talk Sport. In League 1, Blackpool 0, Wickham 0. Nil, Bolton 5, Reading 2, Bristol Rovers 0, Shrewsbury 0, Burton 1, Barnsley 3, Cambridge 3, Wigan 1, Carlisle 1, Lincoln 3, Charlton 0, Stevenage 0, Cheltenham 1, Exeter 2, Leighton Orient 1, Peterborough 2, Northampton 2, Port Vale 0, Oxford United 4, Fleetwood 0. In League 2, Grimsby 1, Bradford 1, Crew 0, Forest Green 3, Harrogate 5, Gillingham 1, Mansfield against Accrington, match postponed. Morecambe 2, Barrow 1, Newport 0, Crawley 4, Notts County 3, MK Dons 3, Stockport 1, AFC Wimbledon 0, Sutton United 3, Swindon 1, Tranmere 1, Colchester 1, Walsall 2, Salford 1. In the National League, AFC filed against Gateshead, match postponed. Aldershot 1, Dorking 1, Altrincham 1, Oldham 0, Barnet 3, Oxford City 1, Bromley 1, Woking 1. Chesterfield 1, Kidderminster 3, Dagenham and Redbridge 1, Ebbsfleet 1, Eastleigh 2, Maidenhead 3, FC Halifax Town against York City, match postponed, they'll play tomorrow night, Rochdale 1, Hartlepool 1, Southend 4, Boreham Wood 2, Wealdstone 0, Solihull Moors 1, in the National League North, Bishop Stalford 3, Banbury United 1, Brackley Town 3, Tamworth 0, Chester 0, Alfreton 2, Chorley 2, Blythe Spartans 0, Curzon Ashton 2, South Shields 0, Hereford 2, Buxton 2, Kings Lynn 3, Scarborough Athletic 4, Peterborough Sports 1, Gloucester City 0, Rushall Olympic 1, Boston United 0, Southport 0, Scunthorpe 1, Spennymore 3, Farsley Celtic 1, Warrington 1, Darlington 3, National League South, Weymouth were leading Yeovil 1 0 when the game was abandoned due to an emergency in the away end. Averley 1, Havenham Waterlooville 2, Braintree 2, Hemel Hempstead Town 0. Chippenham nil, Truro nil. That match is still going on. Dartford nil, Eastbourne Borough two, Dover one, Chelmsford City nil, Maidstone one, Welling one, Slough Town two, St Albans City two, Taunton Town nil, Bath City two, Tombridge Angels one, Farnborough two, Torquay three, Western Supermare three, and Worthing two, Hampton and Richmond Borough nil. Game day, the greatness, the goals, and the glory. Game day live on Talk Sports. It's Easter Monday, it's TalkSport taking you around the grounds, bringing you all the goals 
as they go in as we come to crunch time in the season in the EFL. Sammy Smodix made that now 29 goals for this season. His second of the afternoon, Sunderland nil, Blackburn 2. It's Coventry City 1, Cardiff City nil, and it's no great surprise. Ellis Sims who has scored it. Quality at the Hawthorns, Alex Crook. 52 minutes gone, West Brom nil, Watford 1. Wow, Sunderland nil, Blackburn Rovers Four. It's Coventry 1, Cardiff 2, so the Bluebirds have turned this around, and it's another own goal. Keanu Hoover! 2-2 two two for Keanu Hoover, and Stoke a level! And West Brom are right back in it, Alex Crook. They are indeed, 20 minutes to save themselves, it's West Brom 1, Watford 2, Swansea 0, QPR 1, what a huge goal for the visitors as well, and it was Steve Cook, the centre-back, who got it. 77 on the clock, it's all over here Adrian Bolton for Reading 1 and it's Aaron Connons with his hat trick and it is Sunderland 1 Blackburn Rovers 5 Middlesbrough 2 Sheffield Wednesday 0 the Borough double their lead and it's another sensational goal West Brom 2 Watford 2 Darnell Furlong up from the back has just absolutely smashed home from 20 yards out second half here at the Hawthorns has just been a goal of the season in competition, extraordinary stuff. It really was a cracking second half here at the Hawthorns. And what a day in the EFL in the Championship. Big wins at the bottom for Birmingham, Blackburn and QPR. Playoff chasing Norwich, Coventry and Preston all lost. While here at the Hawthorns, West Brom needed to come from two down uh, to draw 2-2 with Watford. Four brilliant goals in the second half after a very forgetful first half. And earlier, live on TalkSport 2, Leicester City. 1-3-1 came from behind against Norwich to go top of the table ahead of big games that are coming up. Ipswich Southampton coming up at 5.30. We've got that live here on Talk Sport and at 8 o'clock Leeds against Hull. So let's tell you how the table looks. Championship, Leicester are top on 85. Ipswich a second on 84. Leeds a third on 83. They've all played 39 games as it stands. Southampton have played 37 games. They're on 74 points. 10 points off automatic promotion. And the playoff places beyond that West Brom are 5th on 68 Norwich are 6th on 64 Coventry are just outside the playoffs on 60 points they remain 4 points behind Norwich so lucky escape for Norwich really Preston on 59 and then Hull on 58 Middlesbrough are on 58 are they back in the playoff mix one wonders and Cardiff on 56 down at the bottom Rotherham got a rare win it saved them from relegation today it's not been confirmed it will be confirmed though they are going to be going down but just not yet they're on 23 points they've matched the lowest ever points tally in the championship which is a record they set in 2017 they remain bottom they will be heading down above them Sheffield Wednesday lost they're on 39 Huddersfield on 40 and then above the dotted line Plymouth lost again they're on 41 Birmingham on 42 a big win for them under Gary Rout today Millwall on 44 lost at Rotherham and Stoke and Blackburn both on 45 points in League One at the top of the table Portsmouth play Derby tomorrow night Bolton and Peter have closed the gap Bolton on 78 three points behind Derby after a big win against Reading Posh won at Orient by two goals to one next up for them is the EFL Trophy Final next Sunday uh, that is at Wembley and it's live on Talk Sport 2 the remaining playoff places are taken by Barnsley who came from behind for a win today and Lincoln who won yet again and they're ahead of Oxford on goal difference in that final playoff spot down at the bottom Carlisle not quite relegated but they will be they're on 27 Fleetwood on 34 lost again Cheltenham on 38 led but lost Port Vale on 39. Their two-match winning run came to an end. They lost today. They're a point behind Burton, who were leading but lost today. Cambridge won again, and they're five points above Burton Albion. So you're thinking it's four from the bottom five that will be going down. In League Two, Stockport got a late winner. They're four points clear at the top of the table. Uh, Mansfield on 73. Wrexham on 73. And MK Dons on 71 after Notts County's late equaliser. They're in the uh, top playoff spot. Barrow behind them, four points behind them in fifth. Crew in six, lost again, and Crawley in seventh, two points ahead of Morecambe and Gillingham. And down at the bottom, Sutton United are out of the bottom two. They're out of the relegation places under Steve Morrison after a fourth straight win. And in the bottom two are Forest Green Rovers, who got a big win today away from home at Crew Alexandra, but they remain bottom. They're on 36, Colchester on 38, Sutton United are on 39 and the National League we know Chesterfield are champions but they keep losing they're uh, on 95 and at the bottom it's Oxford City who are relegated Dorking second bottom Boreham Wood 
third bottom. Kidderminster with a win at Chesterfield, but they stay in the bottom four. A point behind Wealdstone, who conceded a late goal to lose and home to Solihull Moors this afternoon. So you're up to date with the tables and all the results on Game Day Live on TalkSport. TalkSport Breakfast with Arnold Clark. Sell your car with no admin fees, any make or model. Specsavers have asked me to tell you something important, so I've gone creative and dug out my old (laughs) jack-in-the-box. It's about prices and how they jump up when you least expect them. I said, jump up when you least expect them. (sighs) At Specsavers, glasses still start from £15. Not now, Jack, including standard single-vision lenses only. He's going to jump up now, isn't he? Oh, well, you're better off with Specsavers. (laughs) Oh, I knew it! Ask in store for details. Get all your must-haves this Ramadan at Asda. From a Sohor to get out of bed for. With Lancashire Farm Natural Yogurt for £1.60. To sunset reunions you'll rush home for. With 1.8 kilograms of Shazan's fresh chicken breast down to £11.20. We've got every Ramadan moment covered. So you can concentrate on what really matters. Asda. That's more like it. Selected stores and lines subject to availability may exclude Asda Express and small stores. See asda.com forward slash small stores. Get three pieces of original recipe chicken, fries and your choice of side for just four forty nine a KFC. That's a serious size meal for a seriously small price. The original recipe deal for just four forty nine. Do the deal until the 28th of April only at KFC. Participating restaurants only. T's and C's apply. At Wix, get Dulux Standard 2.5 litre coloured emulsion was £21, now 15 Be house proud with Wix. Ends Wednesday. Terms apply. Want to build the bet you want in seconds? With Unibet's bet builder, you're on. Add shots, corners, cards and more. And increase your odds with bet builder rackers. Combining bet builders across multiple games and sports. Download the Unibet app or visit unibet.co.uk and get a bet builder boost every day. You need bet. You're wrong. 18 plus BeGambleAware.org. Pre-match only. Max state £10 minimum. Combined odds of 4 to 1 and 3 selections. T's and C's apply. An epic new Disney Plus original. Renegade Nell. Who is this? Nellie Jackson? A highway woman. <gasps> she fights as though just possessed. She's formidable. Get after her! Meet the highway woman, who's a bit of a legend. A word of warning. <laughs> you don't want to mess with me. <laughs> Renegade Now, a new original series, now streaming exclusively on Disney Plus. 18 plus subscription required, T's and C's apply. On average, Rift get their customers three grand bike. I'm like a rubber ball, I come down. Let's get the ball rolling. Search Rift Tax Refunds. At Morrison's, get any four for five pounds from over 30 frozen products. From bird's eye garden peas, potato waffles, Goodfellas pizzas, plus many more. That's more easy peasy tea sorted. Morrison's to shop at Morrison's. Majority of stores and online subject to availability. Selected lines ends 14th of April. Game day. The greatness, the goals, and the glory. Game day live on Talk Sports. Oh, what a big day in the uh, EFL. Big day at the top because Leicester have gone top. We've got two live commentaries coming up on TalkSport. Ipswich Southampton kicks off in just over 10 minutes. We'll be at Portman Road very shortly. And after that, Leeds against Hull. But a quick reflection on what's gone on this afternoon and the playoff mix in the Championship. Let's bring in Adrian Clark, who's watched Coventry lose at home to Cardiff. Not a lot of us saw that going on, but... They got lucky because Preston behind them lost as well. Norwich above them lost. They've missed a big chance to close that gap on Norwich though, Adrian. What went wrong? Yeah, huge missed opportunity. They they didn't get going. They started the game fantastically. They looked really... uh, They looked a top side in the first 15 minutes, moving it quickly, creating chances. But then... They coasted, and they didn't seem to push themselves. It was almost as if they felt that they were going to cruise to to a win. Even when when uh, Cardiff City levelled it, it, it felt like they they just assumed that they'll find a way to win the game. And before they knew it, they were two one down. And then suddenly the gear change happened, and we saw a much better tempo towards the end. A little bit of desperation, and all of a sudden things started to happen for Coventry City but it, it wasn't their day Look, they had a bit of bad luck the goal that, that won it for Cardiff City took a double deflection from Bowler's Cross off, off the left back and then the centre half so you know they'll look at that and say we were unfortunate but on the balance of play 
I'd like to credit Cardiff City. This was an excellent defensive team performance from them. Um, they haven't got many goal scorers, Cardiff City. Perry NG, the right back, is their top scorer on six. Well, he's been joined now by a joint leading scorer, and that's OG. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Own goal. Brilliant. Uh, superb. Um, Adrian, it's been a joy to have you on the show uh, today, despite the Arsenal stuff. Thanks very much. Yeah, uh, <laughs> one wonders if the uh, FA Cup semi finalist Coventry are just lulling Manchester United into a false sense of security. Alvin Martin's been at the League One game at Brisbane Road, where the posh got back to winning ways after that defeat to Carlisle on uh, Friday, and they needed to uh, as well, with Bolton winning as well. Just keep that little bit of pressure on the top two Portsmouth play Derby tomorrow night but a better performance from Peterborough ahead of Wembley on Sunday Alvin yeah absolutely they played some really good stuff Adrian and uh, you know the way they do knock the ball about you, you would have thought Wembley would suit them as well because uh, from the back they, they get the ball out well you will know Edwards and Knight comfortable on the ball as centre halves travelled with it uh, they, 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 they found themselves in the, in the in, in the attacking third a lot the two centre-halves and the, the two wide players did ever so well they, they knocked it round they dominated midfield but uh, do you know what they could have drawn this game in the end uh, it, it, up, it, up against a, a, a late Orient side Adrian who'd been struggling to score goals they had a header that they missed uh, right at the end uh, and, it, and, and you know RJ should really score uh, so I think you know they, 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 they will have looked at that uh, certainly Ferguson will be looking at it and saying look if we aren't clinical you know at Wembley uh, we, we'll lose the game but they're certainly good enough to create chances are they good enough to stick them away and kill games off we shall see Alvin it's been great to be with you on uh, Easter Monday thank you very much Alvin Martin at Brisbane Road uh, we're going to be off to Portman Road next on Talk Sports Talk Sport Breakfast with Arnold Clark get the UK's best used car deals guaranteed Imagine first in a world of rooms, inspiration and expertise, where you can laze in luxury accommodation. And kids can feast from 95 pence. Tickets are free to everyone this Easter and include all the attractions. You've just imagined a day out at IKEA. IKEA, the wonderful everyday. Businesses across the land, whatever kind of business you're in, BT's got your back. We're talking small business, big business, new business, old business. Top secret business? Well, that's your business. But yes, global business, serious business, family business. What about show business? Yes, all the businesses. So whatever your business, let us take care of business with our secure and reliable connectivity. BT's got your back. Search BT's got your back. It's the speed. It's the competition. It's all or nothing. Team Sport Indoor Karting. With adrenaline fueled action on every straight, rampant corner. It's where you, your mates and colleagues can be champions for the day. It's the ultimate karting experience. With 35 tracks nationwide, there's a Team Sport track near you. Book online and save 10% with the code GET10 at team-sport.co.uk. Want to build the bet you want in seconds? With Unibet's bet builder, you're on. Add shots, corners, cards and more. And increase your odds with bet builder rackers. Combining bet builders across multiple games and sports. Download the Unibet app or visit unibet.co.uk and get a bet builder boost every day. Unibet. You're wrong. 18 plus BeGambleAware.org. Pre match only. Max stake £10 minimum. Combined odds of 4 to 1 and 3 selections. T's and C's apply. Monday night. Live Championship Football on Salt Sports. Oh, it's in. Get stuck in. Leeds United versus Hull. Meet up in the car park from 6. Kick off 8 o'clock. Rock. No one else brings you more. And it ricochets back into the goal. Monday night on Talk Sport. It's April and it's a mega month on the TalkSport network. We have got over 50 live commentaries for you. There's loads of live exclusive Premier League games, including all the midweek games, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all live and exclusive on the TalkSport network. Some of them only available on the TalkSport app, so get that onto your phone or your tablet. And we've got Champions League, Europa League, and of course, we're the only national radio station that brings you commentaries from the EFL. Our commitment to the EFL is unquestionable and Ipswich can go top of the table if they beat Southampton in what is a huge game second against fourth is coming up live on TalkSport you're listening to the EFL on TalkSport with McDonald's order Mac delivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points 18 plus terms and conditions apply uh, Dean Ashton is at Portman Road 
and the atmosphere at Portman Road has been brilliant all season the fans have come back in numbers given the success they're having under Kieran McKenna and I would imagine describe it for me the atmosphere there ahead of second against fourth and a chance for town to go top well it's electric electric exactly what you would imagine I remember coming here years ago Aidan playing I always thought what a stadium what an atmosphere they used to create and they'd lost that they'd lost the soul of the club almost for years but it is back and honestly with the clocks changing that extra bit of sunshine we've got over on that far side with the away fans and the Ipswich fans and the noise and the atmosphere and I think the expectation is different Aid now and you can sense it here they they realise that they've got a chance of doing something quite incredible and upsetting almost upsetting the odds by uh, by going up automatically um, and if they win against Southampton it's almost like they're knocking away another challenger um, today with Russell Martin's side and, and I think they realise how big and important this game is. When I look at the Ipswich 11, possibly with the exception of Lee Davis, I look at it and think there's no players there that really smack you in the face as Premier League players waiting to happen and that's not a criticism of them, in fact it's a compliment to them and to their coaches brought together a really good effective team. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think that's a, a, a bad thing to say because you know these these are some players that have started out in in League One and are now looking at the Premier League. It's been done before by by plenty of players, um, and that can come from confidence. It could come from great coaching and improvement as players and and as a team. But you're you're right. I, I think all of these players if they were to get promoted it's about proving themselves then in the Premier League I don't think anyone would expect them to go and, and be incredible but they could and I think you know to be able to believe in yourself as a player from a, from a League One player to now be looking and, and thinking we could get promoted into the Premier League instead of possible clubs like Leeds, Leicester and, and Southampton um, just shows how far they've come in, in such a short space of time uh, I look at Southampton, we talked earlier about how disappointed Russ Martin would have been conceding that late equaliser against uh, Middlesbrough on Friday, not taking chances at one end and defending badly at the other end. One thing he also did was he took off his front three at 1-0. And, and I wonder if he might think, maybe I made a mistake there, Adam Armstrong, Che Adam, Suleiman all went off. And I just wonder if he, he won't make that, if it was a mistake, if he won't do that again. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he, if he felt that way. Um, and as managers, you you know you make these calls. I was at Newcastle at the weekend when David Moyes made the call to make a change, and it went horribly wrong. And they must, it must, you know, it must weigh on them. I'm sure the managers when they make these decisions. Um, today it feels like it's not a day to tinker. This is a game that you can't take lightly. I think you've got, you need your best players. You need them at their absolute peak if you're going to win this game because to come away to Ipswich to here at Portman Road, if you want a result, you are going to have to put in one hell of a performance and they were bullied at St Mary's I was there earlier on in the season when Russell Martin was, was booed at half time and, um, and they physically bullied Southampton so it's going to be interesting I think without Walker Peters in the side Harwood Bellis Stevens, Bednarek Bree that looks like a more physical back four and I think they need to be ready for that well Leeds Hull at 8 o'clock is later live and exclusive and only on TalkSport but before that let's take you to Portman Road on TalkSport Ipswich against Southampton second against four Saints need to win it Town go top if they win it here's the former England striker Dean Ashton alongside your commentator on TalkSport Joe Shannon Thanks Adrian, good afternoon everyone, ahead of the next step in a championship promotion race that is one of the best in living memory. A win will take Ipswich back to the top as they seek a return to the Premier League after more than 20 years away. Not since the 1960s and the Sir Ralph Ramsey days have they won back-to-back -back promotions from the third tier to the top flight. The last team to achieve that feat were Southampton in 2012. Russell Martin's team are 10 points behind Ipswich which at the start of the game and although they've got two games in hand surely Southampton must win to keep their automatic promotion hopes going 
So Ipswich have Ladke in goal. Twansebi, Wolfenden, Burgess and Davis in defence. Morsi and Luongo holding. Jackson, Chaplin and Hutchinson in support of Moore up front. For Southampton, it's Bazunu in goal. Harwood, Bellis, Stevens, Bednarek and Bree. Downs, formerly of Ipswich, Aribo and Stuart Armstrong in midfield. Adam Armstrong, Adams and Fraser are the front three. Bright sunshine in Suffolk today. And blue skies up ahead too. Lots of replica shirts on show at the start of spring. The start of a wonderful month of April to come on the Talk Sport Network with more than 50 live commentaries. Ipswich against Southampton, Dean Ashton. We've smuggled you in. Former Norwich striker has made the trip to Portman Road. I tell you what though, Dean, this could be something special. It could be. Yeah, you've snuck me in, but I don't mind being I don't mind being here because actually Ipswich have been fantastic to watch. They've been entertaining. They're 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 different to a Leeds and Leicester. They've conceded way more goals in uh, in their games. I think and, and they've shown that they can come back from adversity so even if Southampton would get off to a, a good start and take the lead you wouldn't write this Ipswich team off but for me if Southampton don't win this game I think that could be automatic promotion over for Southampton I think their I think automatic promotion charge has to start today it has to start with a win to close that gap on Ipswich and memories of Southampton's club record unbeaten run between late September and mid-February have faded now three defeats in their last seven championship games though of course if they miss out on automatic promotion you'd expect them to be fully ensconced in the playoff picture Ipswich eight wins from nine losing just once in that time so the memories for them of the wobble in and around Christmas and the early part of the new year seem a distant memory now and Portman Road is rocking and roaring these days to the sound of Ipswich success under Kieran McKenna still just 37 years of age the manager the Northern Irishman a formerly first team coach at Manchester United he learned under Jose Mourinho and he really is setting out his stall Kieran McKenna as one of the best young coaches around and I'm sure there'll be many who'll give similar sorts of praise to Russell Martin for the job he's done at Southampton yeah it's, it's I think the big chance isn't it for Russell Martin he's done very well his style of football is there for everyone to see at every club he's been at same with Southampton first for average possession in the league this season they will keep hold of the ball I'm sure even here so Leicester rose back to the summit earlier Ipswich can leapfrog them again with a win here and don't forget it's Leeds against Hull at 8 o'clock while Southampton in fourth are desperate for a win to try and keep pace with the automatic promotion chases. It really is going to be some ride between now and the end of the season. It's crunch time. The only place to be is talk sport. Southampton have got the game off and underway on a lovely late afternoon right at the start of spring. As I say, uh, slithered the field of play, the far side of the field and the cobbled stand in the bright sunshine. Southampton in there. Uh, red shirts black shorts and white socks playing from right to left in the first half and Ipswich in blue and white from left to right and an early touch at the heart of defence for Jan Bednarek who is back fit and able to start today for Southampton he gets the ball back from the goalkeeper Gavin Bazunu and here is Stuart Armstrong who's peeled away into the left back position for Southampton he gallops up the near side the left Caden Jackson one of two players to come into the Ipswich team today after their win at Blackburn on Good Friday comes across and Ipswich have a throw in the right back position we are right at the back of the main stand here a steep drop of three tiers to the touchline below I can see Russell Martin and Kieran McKenna already issuing instructions after what has been a dramatic day once again in the EFL and the championship in particular Leicester 3 Norwich 1 in the 12.30 kickoff live on TalkSport 2 so Leicester top of the table for now Ipswich in second they would need a win to go back to the summit and Leeds promotion chasing take on Hull who still have hope of the playoffs at Ellen Road later on Southampton on the ball with Downs formerly of Ipswich back to the halfway line and Harwood Bellis finds Bednarek and Harwood Bellis in the centre circle steers the ball forward to the feet of Erivo midway inside Ipswich territory Adam Armstrong 19 goals in the championship so far this season the joint second top scorer in the league coming into the weekend 
just looking at the Southampton shape early on here Dean Ashton how have they lined up nil nil two minutes gone well we wondered sort of where you know Bednarek Harwood Bellis and Stevens would fit in well Stevens has actually drifted into a, a midfield area so far whether that's when Southampton have the ball and he'll drop them back into a left back position which he has done now without the ball so we'll keep an eye on on that side of things and as for Ipswich Hutchinson has actually started on the left with Jackson on the right and we'll just see how often Jackson can get alongside Moore or even beyond him I think that's going to be important for Keeper Moore to have that support as the lone striker here is Wolfenden at the heart of the Ipswich back line born in Ipswich out to the near side the right the right back to Ansebi good ball by Chaplin up the inside right channel well intercepted by uh, Bednarek he was looking for the pace of Caden Jackson on the inside right channel and on the flanks today Ipswich in the shape of Jackson and Hutchinson there is plenty of that pace in support of Kiefer Moore the six foot five inch centre forward Ipswich have won it back half the field Moore in the left wing position in the bright sunshine crosses left footed it rebounds off Aribo and then the header clear into touch and out of play by James Bree and that's a throw to Ipswich deep inside Southampton territory goalless early on here live on Talk Sports and it's the start of our a Premier League programme, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights, all ten Premier League matches, live and exclusive with us on the Talk Sport Network. And Premier League is where Ipswich and Southampton hope to be next season. Leif Davis will take a throw, far side, in front of the cobbled stand. He's very close to where the Southampton fans are, most of them just above him in the upper tier. And he'll hoist this in towards the near post. And maybe an early test coming up. one of the most impressive sides in the EFL this season Ipswich Town who'll go top with a victory Bednarek for Southampton edge of his own penalty area Lively first, six minutes from the home team in particular, and they really do feel like they're feeding off the atmosphere here. Yeah, of course, the energy, the pressing... 